Hello everybody, in this video the brilliant Mr. B is going to be taking you through how to work with polygons for your GCSE maths. We're going to be looking at some easy examples, some medium examples, some harder examples. If you are confident with this then you can skip through to the harder examples. If you want to take a bit more time that is absolutely fantastic, there is no pressure, there is no stress involved in this. Take this at your own pace. interior and exterior angles of polygons and for easy questions we've been asked for exterior angles so we're going to find the total of the exterior angles and we're going to find a size of one exterior angle now to help me do this what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut out every single angle from our shape so here's the angle from the bottom cutting out the angle from the right i'm going to cut out the angle at the top And I'm going to cut out the angle from the left. And what I'm doing is I'm arranging the four angles that I've cut out all together. Now, if you imagine those four angles fitting together, you should be able to see that they're going to make a full circle if I slot them all together a little bit more closely. And a full circle is 360 degrees. So we know that the total exterior angles of the shape we have there is 360 degrees. Now, if we want the exterior angles for one side of that, for one angle, we're going to have to divide it by four. If we divide 360 by four, then we're going to get 90. So make a little note there that I've divided by four. So we have the size of one exterior angle, which is 90 degrees, and we have the total of all the exterior angles, all four of them, which is 360 degrees. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for question two. So I'm going to cut out all five angles. So we have the angle at the bottom. And again, we'll start to arrange them into some sort of pattern. Angle on the bottom left. We have the bottom right, at uh, the top, top left, with the angle at the top. And we have the angle on the right. Now, again, if you look at the way that I'm arranging these angles, you should be able to see, again, that if I got them closer together, they are going to make a full circle. So the total exterior angles of that shape is also 360 degrees. Now, all of these are regular shapes. So that means that every single shape, every single regular polygon has got a total exterior angles of 360 degrees. And if you think about it, it makes sense because if you walk around the outside of the shape, you're always going to return back to where you came from. So walking around the edge of any shape like this, you're always going to be walking in a circle. Then it's just a matter of count the number of angles the shape has and divide that by question two. We divide it by five. For question three, we divide it by six. For question four, we divide it by seven. And for question five, dividing by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So then, to get the size of one exterior angle, we just divide 360 by the number of angles the shape has, or even better, the number of sides the shape has. So 360 divided by 5 will give us 72 degrees for question 2. 360 divided by 6 will give us 60 degrees for question 3. 360 divided by 7 will give us 51.5 for three degrees. I have rounded that to two decimal places. That number does go on. And for question five, 360 divided by nine is 40 degrees. Interesting to point out here is the majority of these questions are going to give you whole number answers. And only numbers like seven or 11 are going to give you uh, decimal numbers. Now, this is why 360 was chosen. It was chosen by people. It's not been mathematically derived. It was chosen to represent a circle because you can divide 360 in lots and lots of ways and get whole number answers. So you'll always, all, almost always get a whole number answer unless you're dividing by usually odd prime numbers like 7, 11, 13. Now, the last thing to note here is that you may also be asked to name the shapes. So a shape that has exterior angles of 90 degrees, that is a quadrilateral. It's a special kind of quadrilateral. It is a square. All, all these being regular shapes, you know they're regular because all the angles are the same size. Then we're going to have pentagon for a five-sided shape. 
we've got hexagon for six-sided shape. Now, it's seven-sided shape. There's a bit of disagreement. So you could have heptagon. Some people say septagon. And a nine-sided shape is a nonagon. Moving on to the medium questions now. Now we'll look at something called interior angles. So with the easy questions, you see the angles drawn on the outside of the shapes. Now they're drawn on the inside of the shapes. And again, we're going to find the total interior angles. And we're going to find one interior angle. Now, the way to find the total interior angles is think about triangles. And triangles add up to 180 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut every single shape up into triangles. So the first shape, which is a square, it has a 180 degree triangle on the left and a 180 degree triangle on the right. So we're going to add together two 180s and that's going to give us 360 degrees. And then if we want the size of one of those, because we have four angles, we are going to divide by four and 360 divided by four will give us 90 degrees. Moving on to question two, which is a pentagon. Again, we're going to cut it up to triangles. Now, we have to stare in the same corner because what we could do is we could just draw random lines everywhere and we could make a ridiculous number of triangles and that's not going to work. So we're actually drawing the minimum number of triangles, which is achieved by drawing all the triangles, all these lines coming from one corner. So now we can see that a pentagon, we have a 180 triangle at the bottom and a 180 triangle in the middle. So we're going to do 180 times 3 and that's give us our total interior angles which is 540 degrees. Now pentagons have got five angles and five sides so we need to divide by five. So 540 divided by five will give us 108 degrees or one angle. Moving on to the hexagon. So we're just going to start with one corner and we'll just join it up to one of the other corners. And again, every single line has that same corner. And that way we'll get the minimum number of lines possible and therefore the minimum number of triangles. So we've got a 180 triangle at the bottom, 180 on the left, 180 on the right, and 180 at the top. So we're going to do 180 times the four triangles and that's going to give us 720 degrees. It's a six-sided shape so we'll be dividing by six. So 720 divided by six is going to give us 120 degrees for one angle in the shape. If you've got a protractor, then all these are drawn to scale, so you should be able to put your protractor on the screen and confirm that these should be the correct sizes. Now, moving on, do I really want to draw all those triangles now? And is there a way around it? Now, the next question, it's got seven sides, so it's one side larger than the hexagon. So this is a heptagon. Now, if we go through this, a square, we had two 180s. And in the pentagon, we had three 180s. In the hexagon, we had four 180s. So in the heptagon, we must have five. So we do 180 times five, which is 900. It is a seven-sided shape, so we need to be dividing by seven. And 907 is gonna give us 128.57 degrees. Now looking at our final shape, now we're just going to count up the number of sides it's got. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sides. It's a ten sided shape. I've not spoken about this one yet, so this is a decagon. And again, with all these shapes, you know, we've got a square, a pentagon, a hexagon, we've got a heptagon. The one we've not looked at is an octagon, which is eight sides. And they should be all the ones you need to remember, really. Now, with the decagon, we've got to think about how many triangles are in it. And actually drawing out the triangles might take quite a while. But look at our pattern again. With a four-sided shape, we had two triangles. With a five-sided shape, we had three triangles. Six-sided shape, we had four triangles. We always have two triangles less than the number of sides of the shape. So a ten-sided shape is going to have eight triangles in it. And that means eight lots of 180. So 180 multiplied by 8 will give us our total interior angles, which is 1,440 degrees.
Now, since it's a 10 sided shape, we need to divide by 10, we're not divided by 8. So that gives us one side would be 144 degrees. And again, we did that by dividing by 10 for a 10 sided shape. Before we move on, I'll tell you a way that you can check your answers. And it is that the interior, exterior angles are on a straight line with each other, so they add up to 180. So if you look at the answers for the easy and medium sections, the exterior angle of the square is 90, the interior is 90, they add to 180. The exterior of a pentagon is 72, the interior is 108, they add together to make 180. With a hexagon, the exterior angle is 60, the interior angle is 120. Again, they add up to 180. I can even use that fact to get the interior or exterior angle from the other one by just taking away it from 180. So if you know one of them, you should know both. Now, looking at the hard questions, we've only been given one part of the shape. They've been asked which shape we have. Now, you could refer back to our previous answers in the easy section, and you should know straight away which shape this is. It's probably going to be a hexagon. However, what happens if you don't have a lot of answers you've already written out? And this is the only thing the exam paper gives you. So what method would you use? Well, we know the total exterior angles is 360 degrees. Every single shape has an exterior angle total of 360, because going around a shape, you're walking around in a circle. What we do is we divide that by the angle we've been given for the exterior angle. So in this case, it's 60. And that's going to give us the number of sides the shape has. So 360 divided by 60 is going to give us 6. So that means we've got 6 sides. Now, you will get some marks for the working out, but you need to be able to name the six-sided shape, and that is hexagon. If you decided just to write hexagon down on the page, you have no working out, but you may risk your marks because you could just guess it's hexagon. There's only a limited number of regular shapes we need to be learning. So just so you've shown the exam that you're not guessing, you have to write the working out down. Moving on to question two, the same method. So we know that every shape, no matter how many sides, has 360, the exterior angles. The shape we've been given has 32.7 degrees for its exterior angle. So we do the division to find out how many sides the shape has. So 360 divided by 32.7. So I am using a calculator for this. And the answer I'm getting, I'm getting 11.009. And more decimal places than that even. Now, what this means is 32.7 itself has been rounded. So if we get an answer that's very, very close to 11, we can't have a shape that's got 11 and a bit sides. It's got to have a whole number of sides. So we're just going to say this shape has got 11 sides. Now, as for the name of this shape, I can't say I've ever seen on the exam paper these larger sided shapes being asked for the names. So you would be okay writing 11 sides as the answer. And the question wouldn't ask you for the name of the polygon, unless you're very, very unlucky. But the name of an 11 sided shape is a hen decagon. So the decagon pair sees it's got 10 sides, and the hen is another way of saying one side. So you've got one and 10 sides together. Moving on to question three, and we've been given an interior angle of the shape. But the method we've been using has been on the exterior angle. But remember, I said at the end of the medium questions, you can always find one angle from the other. So if the interior angle is 140, if we extend this line outwards, we've got angles on a straight line. So this angle is going to be 40 degrees because 40 and 140 add up to 180 degrees. And the angle that goes along with the 140, the interior angle, is the exterior angle. So 40 degrees is the exterior angle in that shape. So now we can do a 360. We're dividing by 40, the exterior angle, which again is very easy to calculate from the interior angle. And 360 divided by 40 will give you 9. So this shape has got 9 sides. And the name of that shape, it's a nonagon. So let's do the same thing for question four. We also have an interior angle. So I'm just going to extend the diagram, show the exterior angle as well. 
I'm going to use a calculator and subtract that number from 180 to get what size the angle is. So 180, take away 147.3, gives me 32.7 degrees. So that's the size of the exterior angle. Now, look at that, we've already done that question. 32.7 was the exterior angle we had for the 11-sided shape, the hen decagon. So we're going to have exactly the same answer for that question. And we would use exactly the same working name. Now, moving on to question five, what you might be given is rather than be given an exterior angle or an interior angle, you might be given the total of all the interior angles. So 1,440. Now, what we need to do in this scenario is remember, we're kind of working backwards here, and the way we get numbers, like 1,440, is that we multiply the number of sides the shape has, take away 2, by 180. We kind of count up all the triangles. So if we divide this by 180, we're going to get how many triangles makes up the shape. And that's going to give us 8 triangles. Now it's crucial that we remember that the number of triangles is always off by. So if a shape has got eight triangles, then it's going to have 10 sides. I suppose the reason for this is you think about the smallest kind of shape you can have, which is a triangle. A triangle has got one triangle with three sides. So we're kind of starting off uh, with two extra sides with triangles, and that goes all the way through all the other shapes. And what's a 10 sided shape? It is a decagon. Now, the last thing to say is that all these methods are interchangeable. So, what you could do is rather than counting up the triangles, you could work out the exterior angle and take it away from 180. And rather than dividing 360 by the number of size to find the exterior angle, you could find the interior angle by adding up the triangles and take away from 180. Whatever method you remember is a method that you're going to be using. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.